Welcome. I want to share with you a few words of encouragement. Do you have the life you want or do you just have the life you got? See, I think a lot of us, we're not living the life we want, we're living the life we've got. And the reason we never live the life that we want is because we don't know what we want. And God keeps waiting, ask me, what are your dreams? What's your vision? What burdens you? What fills you with passion? What sets you on fire? Ask me for something bigger than you so that I can show up and be God in your life. Do you know what you want? Because if you don't know what you want, don't get mad at God that he never gives you what you need. Because if Jesus encounters two blind men walking as he walks down through Jericho, and they cry out to him, have mercy on us, and he stops and says, I'm gonna ask you a question. And when I ask you this question, I need you to really think this through. Because you have a moment with the creator of the universe. What do you want me to do for you? I think a lot of us are terrified to ask God to do big things in us and through us and for us because it might prove that God does not exist. And so we pray small prayers that we can actually fulfill ourselves. We, we pray prayers that, that won't get God in, in trouble, won't put God in a dilemma because we don't want to push God into a corner where we ask him to be God and we find out he's less than we thought. But God does not need you to protect him or his reputation. God is bigger than your prayers. He's bigger than your dreams. He's bigger than your challenges. He's bigger than your fears. He's bigger than your doubts. He's bigger than you. And he's waiting for you and for me to call on him as the God that he is and ask big dreams and big prayers and call for big visions. God is looking for the person who's not afraid of the big ask. Do you know what you want? I don't think it's incidental that when they're shouting out to Jesus, the crowd rebuked them and told them to be quiet. You know what I've discovered in my own life? Is that when you ask God for big things, people don't start cheering you on. Because if you start praying big prayers, people look at you and say, who do you think you are praying a prayer that big? Who do you think you are asking God to give you your sight? I mean, after all, you are no one. These two men do not even have names. They don't show up on any record. Why would Jesus take the time and energy and effort to give them sight when, when there's nothing about them after this? Doesn't Jesus only answer big prayers for big people? And so they rebuked them because they did not feel that they were worthy of asking Jesus for so great a thing. See, I think a lot of us feel like those blind men on the side of the road. And, and we don't want to be intrusive on God. We don't want to ask God for more than we should or more than we deserve or more than we ought to. And so we keep our prayers humble so that no one will think we think too much of ourselves. If no one is looking at you with some suspicion, looking at you saying, who do you think you are praying that kind of prayer? Who do you think you are having that kind of dream? Who do you think you are expecting God to give you that big a life? And you can respond, I know who I am. I'm just a blind beggar on the side of the road, but Jesus is walking by and I'm not gonna get lost in the crowd. Because it's not who I am. It's who he is. Second Kings chapter 4. The wife of a man from the company of the prophets cried out to Elisha, your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that he revered the Lord, and now his creditor is coming to take my two boys as his slaves. Elisha replied to her, how can I help you? Tell me what do you have in your house? Your servant has 
nothing there at all, she said, except a small jar of olive oil. Elisha said, go around and ask all your neighbors for empty jars. Don't ask for just a few. Then go inside and shut the door behind you and your sons. Pour oil into the jars. As each is filled, put it to one side. And she kept pouring and pouring and pouring and pouring. When all the jars were full, she said to her son, bring me another one. But he replied, there's not a jar left. Then the oil stopped flowing. She went and told the man of God, and he said, go, sell the oil and pay your debts. You and your sons can live on what is left. I think this moment is so critical for her own faith. Here's a woman who's at the end of herself, who doesn't know what to do. But instead of becoming embittered toward God, she runs to the man of God and says, this is where I am. This is where my life is. This is what I've come to. And I love what he says to her, how can I help you? She goes, I just explained to you. We're broke. Our creditors is taking away my boys. They're gonna become slaves. Why does Elijah said, how can I help you? Because God is always going to ask you, what do you want? How can I help you? And then he says, all right, tell me what do you have in your house? And she says, I have nothing at all, which I think is the problem for so many of us. We just, we just don't think we have enough for God to use. And I love the fact that his first question to her is, what do you have? And she says, nothing. He goes, well, rethink that. You have something. He goes, God wants that something. He wants you to take that something that you have and make it everything that you have. So that you give everything you have to God so that he can give you everything he has. There's gonna be a great exchange here. She says, I have nothing at all. She except a small jar of olive oil. I says, all right. I want you to go to all your neighbors and I want you to ask them for all their empty jars, which is not really helpful. But she goes to all the neighbors. I don't even know how many she goes to. And she starts asking for all the empty jars and he does give her one bit of insight. Don't ask for just a few. See, I love this because Elisha knew God. He knew how generous God was. He knew exactly what God wanted to do in her life. And he said, go ask for empty jars, but don't just ask for a few. Go get as many jars as you can. See, I think so many of us are convinced that God can barely fill our one small jar. He said, go get all the empty jars you can. Pull them together and then lock yourself in so that no one can say anyone did this but God. And take that little bit of oil you have and start pouring into all those empty jars. And she poured and she poured and she poured. And by that time she got it. God is a generous God. God does more than we could ever ask or imagine. This is the kind of God that we serve. And she just kept pouring and pouring and pouring. And finally she says to her son, bring me another jar. That's all we got. By that time, she finally understood the character of God. She finally understood the generosity of God. She finally understood that God wanted to prosper her, to bless her, and to pour into her life. That if we give God our empty jars with just the smallest amount of oil, and then we ask him for great things, he will show up and be the great God. Type Amen if you feel blessed. Watch this important message right now.